Words appear. Stacy L. Pearsall, U.S. Air Force, 1998 to 2008. In a home office, a young woman sits at a desk. I would have never anticipated going out and doing my job would result in me having PTSD. I guess I always thought that I was um, stronger than that, but you can't run from the crazy. That's what I've learned. She focuses a camera lens. My name is Stacy Pearsall, and I own the Charleston Center for Photography, where I teach young photographers and also seasoned photographers. I also freelance around the world doing editorial and photojournalism. Photos show two soldiers silhouetted by a cloud of glowing smoke and a man with a tube taped to his bloodied mouth. As a combat photographer, I saw a lot of extreme things. I can't turn that back. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately and fortunately, I got to document one of the bloodiest battles in the war, now known as the Battle for Bakuba. A dozen soldiers patrol a smoky, rubble-strewn town. From um, January until May, 118 soldiers died in Dialt province. I knew them in one way or another. A soldier peers through a dirty, cracked window with an Iraqi flag on it. I think it was then I realized how precious each moment I had with those guys was to me. And then as a photographer feeling an ultimate responsibility for taking portraits of each and every soldier I served with because I wouldn't know if they weren't going to live through the day. So I put a lot of responsibility on myself. Um, and it took its toll emotionally. Wearing beige combat fatigues, Stacy sits at a laptop computer with an open bag of chips on her lap. I didn't really acknowledge the symptoms of PTSD, though they were happening. Outside, she wears a green jumpsuit. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. I went from 150 pounds down to like 115. I had a lot of anxiety. I just couldn't turn it off. Wearing black pants and an orange top, Stacy lies against a white backdrop. By the time I left the military, I began to withdraw from people quite a bit. I was working myself to death really, because I felt like as long as I kept working, then I didn't have to think about my friends who died, and I didn't have to address the symptoms of PTSD. Smiling, Stacy leans her head against a horse's cheek. I isolated myself a lot. You know, really the only interpersonal relationships I had was with my husband and uh, my girlfriend and my horse. Everything that seemed really easy before now seems insurmountable. Wearing scuffed black boots, Stacy sits atop a brown horse with a white stripe down its nose. It's not wanting to talk about anything personal with your friends. The horse splashes through a puddle dotted with rain. It's not wanting to call your family at all. Not wanting to walk your dog, go to the gym. In a meadow, Stacy leans forward and rubs her horse's neck. If you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, it's not wanting to engage in your marriage, not being sexually responsive to your partner. At home, Stacy sits on a bed cradling a mug. And it was really the impact it was having on my marriage that caused me to want to go get treatment. I didn't want to lose the one good thing I had left in my life. In a fenced-in yard, Stacy and her husband watch food on an open grill. It's hard for me to say where I would be if I hadn't gone through treatment for PTSD, but I imagine I would still be in a very dark place, struggling in my marriage, no friends to speak of. And who's to say I would even be sitting here right now if I didn't get the help I needed? The couple hold hands at a patio table, their heads bowed over plates of food. I may have done something that was a permanent solution to a temporary problem. At the table, Stacy's husband gently holds her fingers in his. Pieces of Stacy's short, dark hair dangle over her forehead as she closes her eyes. Now, she stands in the front yard, awash in sunlight. I'm not 100% sure that I will ever be who I was prior to those experiences, but I am who I am now, and I'm living with it. In a studio, Stacy hands a cap to an elderly man seated on a stool. Screens and lights point toward him. I take pictures of veterans, particularly portraits, because it's my way of honoring their service. And I think 
Having that camaraderie brings us back to that bond that nobody else can break between military people. Stacy tosses her head back with a smile. It's a common denominator between us. We've all served, we've all sacrificed, and we still care for each other and we're here for each other. She focuses her camera on the veteran. A hat on a stool reads USS Sierra, AD 18. Logos appear. About Face, the National Center for PTSD, and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. 